So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to This Is It, or This Is IT. I'm Victoria Lovenmark, and I will be your host for this session, and we will now allow a few minutes for people to join. So see you back in just a few minutes.
Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to This Is It. This is Information Technology. I'm Victoria Lovenmark, and I will be your host for this session. Before we hit the juicy stuff, I'd like to go through some ground rules to make sure it's a fruitful and fl easy flowing session for everyone today. So first of all, make sure you have your mobile phones ready to stand by to scan any QR codes on the slides to see career opportunities in information technology across Nestle's market in the world. Also keep an eye on the chat box to catch important announcements and links to announcements. You can also know how to engage with us using slido.com or scan the code to join our sessions. And of course, let's avoid using the chat for spamming messages so it remains easy to navigate for everyone. So with that, let's begin our session. I'm extremely happy to introduce today's keynote speaker, which is the head of information technology and CIO of the Nestle Group, Chris Wright. He is currently traveling extensively, visiting some of the key locations where we have some of our IT teams in the world, notably in India and Mexico. So we were a bit concerned whether he would be here for the keynote. So the first part is recorded and you will soon see it, but stay tuned. He is with us live for the Q&A. So with, without any further ado, let's play the video with Chris. More about Nestle and IT and Nestle. Hello everyone, and welcome to the IT session in the Nest Level event for 2022. I know you've already heard from a number of my colleagues in other functions, and you'll hear from some more of them tomorrow. In the IT session, you'll hear both from me, from some of my team, and very importantly, from some of our strategic partners we work closely with. Before I talk more about IT and Nestle, I'll give you a little bit of my story and my journey to where I am today. It was October 1995 when I joined Nestle in the UK. I joined as a young physics graduate having just finished my master's, and I was entered into the world of one of the largest food and beverage companies in the world. I started in southern London, and was, but was rapidly working across many parts of the UK, ranging from our head offices to our factories. I learned a huge amount developing systems for many different, uh, different functions within our company. I learned a lot through the successes. I learned a lot through the failures. Most importantly of all though, I learned a lot about Nestle's culture, Nestle's people, and what Nestle stands for. And it's those last three things as to why I'm still here today, along with the great opportunities that Nestle IT provides for us globally and a tremendously interesting environment. During those first nine years with Nestle, I was based in the UK. And as I say, I learned a huge amount. But in 2004, I had an opportunity to move to a global program where we were trying to do something tremendously exciting. Nestle had always operated country by country and market by market. And we were trying to create a global program and a global template. This gave me an opportunity to interact not just with one country, but with the world. I learned a huge amount with seeing incredible diversity and working with every country from Australia to Malaysia, to Eastern Europe, to Switzerland, to Chile and to the US and many more beyond. That period of my life was tremendously exciting, very challenging, but also a fantastic experience. And that brought home to me, not just what a great culture Nestle had in the UK, but that that culture expands across the world. And that is the true strength of Nestle. And it made me even more determined to maintain my career here and stay with the company. Having spent a few years driving that program in Switzerland around the data and the analytics part, I then had the opportunity to work closely with some of our more different businesses. Nestle Professional, who had hundreds of thousands of coffee machines in cafes, hotels, buildings, etc. With Nestle Nutrition, who have a very different business model to the rest of Nestle, and also Nestle Health Science that was more focused on health and healthcare, and involved engaging with healthcare practitioners and not just our traditional customers and retailers. I learned a lot about different parts of Nestle. I learned a lot about the matrix of how to bring those capabilities together and what a powerful company we can be respecting the agility of individual businesses, the agility of individual markets, but being able to bring global scale across 186 countries in the world. From working with those businesses, I went on to drive our analytics journey forward and setting up the analytical service lines 
again, globally across the world, bringing the power of data that Nestle has across 186 countries to help make Nestle make better, faster decisions every single day across every function. Again, that was a tremendously exciting time. From there, I went on to become the head of IT and group CIO. In this position, I have the responsibility for several thousand employees around the world. I have to help them to bring the best of information technology to help Nestle to win in the market, to help our employees in everything that they do, and to help Nestle meet its long-term goals like sustainability. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, maybe not. If you go right from the front of our company to the back, IT has to help at every single stage of that journey. From how we engage with consumers, our websites, our digital applications, our e-commerce sites, to how we capture sales with our customers, to how we ensure those are fulfilled and delivered with physical logistics and supply chain, back into our factories and how we manufacture across more than 300 factories around the world, into how we source and procure our raw materials from tens of thousands of suppliers. And underpinning that, we have our financial processes, our processes supporting our people with human resources, and also all the way back into research and development and our future products. That's going right from the front of the company to the very back. And underpinning all of those layers is our underlying IT infrastructure, our ability to support ev each and every one of our 280,000 employees, our ability to keep them se secure and our cybersecurity operations. And very importantly, the information fabric that holds all of that together, that allows information to flow from the front of the company to the back, allows us to analyze that, take insight from that, and help Nestle make better decisions faster every single day. This is what Nestle IT is about. It's about the individual solutions. It's about the ability to connect them together. And it's about the ability to bring information, data, and technology to bear in a way that makes Nestle better, that gives us the freedom in, the, in each individual country, the agility to cope with each type of business, and the scale of being a 90 billion company operating across 186 countries, more than 300 factories. That is what mes makes Nestle exciting. To make it possible, our teams are working with some of the largest technology companies in the world every single day. Ranging from Microsoft, to SAP, to Google, Meta, and IBM. Combining their capabilities and our skills allows us to deliver on behalf of Nestle at scale. But now I want you to hear in a bit more detail about some of our exciting priority areas as we go into the future. And for this, I'm going to ask a couple of the team to take over. I am Renaud Daniel. I'm leading the global marketing, sales and e-business technology teams here in, in Switzerland. Uh, I've been with the company for more than a decade, uh, but I like to say that I really started with Nestle and Nespresso when I was an intern 25 years ago. So uh, the love story with Nestle and some of its brand has been quite extensive. My team is probably the A team within IT of Nestle. Uh, it often reminds me of, of being in control of a video game where I had different skill sets, personalities to compose and orchestrate value proposition that we deliver to our brands. I have the strategists, which are the BRMs, the relationship managers whose mission is to build enough business intimacy that they can advise the CEOs of this group to ensure that they have a fully aligned digital strategy and tech landscape. Then I have the explorers, the pioneers in the product group managers that build the digital products that will make an impact on Nestle consumer behaviors, consumer journeys. And then I have the ambassadors and the ambassadors are pretty much everywhere in the world, sitting in Mexico, sitting in Milan, sitting in Barcelona. And they have a mission to be the voice of IT and making sure there's a certain adoption of these best in class capabilities. But at the same time, they need to make sure that what we provide as a value proposition is relevant locally. So they all have to be the voice, not only of our markets, our consumers in those markets, but also the voice of the global teams here in uh, Barcelona. So my team has probably the most impressive portfolio of projects running at this, uh, at this time. It goes from anything from building a consumer engagement brand website to having full ecosystem built using IoT technologies, AR, VR technologies, e-commerce, 
marketing automation, we cover the full scope. We cover all the digital touch points that the consumer or a customer would travel through. How do you deliver a best in class project? Well, it's pretty much like the big chefs. You need to have the right recipe and you need to have the right ingredients and have the right mix. So in Nestle and in MSC particularly, we need to compose with best in breed solutions like the Salesforce, like the SAPs, like the Microsoft, but we also need to put that special ingredient, which is often found within the startups, which we partner with. All of this together makes invaluable consumer journeys and enjoyable consumer journeys for them to come back and engage with Bestly. So we need to be very savvy in the way that we bring technology to make it frictionless, disruptive, but still enjoyable. In our digital transformation journey, we're looking for people who can make an impact and make a difference. I'm looking for that next generation of pioneers who are going to be able to enable technology to improve consumer experiences. Make sure that we're there when they have questions, be there when they have to do research on some of our products, but also make sure that they have convenience at the tip of their hand. Use your mobile app to reorder your coffee. Ensure that your cat can be diagnosed with diseases through a IoT enabled litter. This is the type of out of the box thinking, challenging the status quo and bringing that experience within Nestle that we're really looking for. I think that you will find a place in Nestle where we're on a continuous learning path. I have probably 25 years of experience professionally, but every day I learn. And the last decade has probably been the most enriching one that I have lived by far. If like me, you believe that technology can make a difference in consumer journeys, then MSC is exactly the place you need to be. So reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'm sure I'll get back to you ASAP. Hi, my name is Vikram Dhan. I'm heading analytics data and integration in Nestle IT. Our mission in Nestle is that we power every decision and action with trusted data. What that means is that we have so many different processes and we have so many different uh, places where we have to use decision framework, but how do we make those decisions? We have to be totally fact-based and we have to use all kinds of different data, internal data, external data, and observational data to in order to get the best insights and make those powerful decisions. We also need to then treat them into action systems so we can activate things, and that's why it's so important to do so. So we are a global team. We are based in multiple locations. Uh, our main hubs are obviously Barcelona, India, and Mexico. Uh, we are a team of more than 200 people. We have lots and lots of diverse skills, as you can imagine in a group like analytics, data, and integration. We have people who come from platforming architecture. So we have platform architects. We have people who are doing integration, and hence the architects that are working in that space. We also have lots of engineers who are working either in data engineering or they're working in machine learning engineering. But we also have data scientists and, and people who are also helping derive those insights through some very good analytical solutions and services. So we do a lot of different exciting projects, but the ethos is we always do it because they are value driven. Either we create value for our stakeholders and shareholders, or we are creating value for the society. Let me take you through some examples. We are working on things like revenue growth management analytics, where we help our company derive the best pricing strategy. We are also looking at our marketing investment and how do we optimize that? We look at areas like supply chain, logistics, and transportation, and see how do we bring the efficiencies there. If you look at procurement, we are using it for betting, building better buying strategies. And when it comes to the society, we are doing a lot of analytics which is related to our ambitions and commitments as a company for sustainability, as an example. So we have a very unique platforming strategy in Nestle. We are not doing work in lots and lots of different fragmented set of tools and technologies when it comes to analytics, data, and integration. We have a very standardized approach, having enterprise best-in-class platforms, which are really leading edge, and hence, we are working with our very strong partners, be it Microsoft, SAP, and many others in the ecosystem that we are using not just to deliver products and 
different use cases at the enterprise level. But we also have done uniquely a great thing of deriving what we call the freedom in the box and an analytics autonomy across a very, very big organization where people can be doing this in a more self-service way. We are using all kinds of different technology, be it on analytics, be it on integration, be it on master data, be it on information architecture and data management. And most of them are following the industry leading trends, be it on cloud, be it on uh, things like hybrid integration patterns. And, and the results are there to see. We have more than 140,000 users in Nestle leveraging these platforms. If you join Nestle ADI, the main difference that you can make is you will bring your amazing experiences from different domains, different industries, or maybe even within our own industry, but you will be able to not just deliver that across one domain or one particular functional area or one particular single category, because we in Nestle give you that variety. You have a multi-category, multifunctional, lots and lots of different use cases, and you can actually use your skills to answer lots of different questions. So people who have worked here have been on a very steep learning path, working through all kinds of domains and very quickly enriching their experiences as part of it. So the best thing about working for ADI is that not only will you get to work on all these different types of business questions that are coming from a multi-category, multi-function setup, but you work with diverse teams. Imagine you're working in one location of the world, but you have so many fellow colleagues who are working in your community in different parts of the organization. You're also working with some of the most leading edge technology companies and engineers that are working there, which is obviously helping you learn and be super agile on your learning agility. And then you also have the advantage of working with lots of service providers who are bringing in lots of industry domain knowledge so you can quickly pick up on all these different kinds of skills. But one thing which is unique is you're not here to be working on lots of MVPs and proof of concepts. We in Nestle are all about creating scale and value at scale. So one of the unique things of working in Nestle is you get to work on programs which actually we get to delivery and see the value realization through our amazing businesses that are spread across the entire world and that cultural diversity and getting to see the results as an outcome of your work is going to be really special. Hi there, my name is Yelena and I'm the head of Global Strategic Workforce Planning and Development for IT at Nestle. I have been with the company for over 20 years. And in those 20 years, I have changed jobs at least 10 times. Never had the time to get bored. Always kept on learning and stretching into areas and capabilities I could not imagine one day would become mine. And this is the beauty of joining such a global company with multicultural teams. You can make your personal journey absolutely amazing. And this lady, we are lucky to have a very diverse workforce working across many countries as one team. We welcome diversity in all its forms and are very lucky to have teams who share that value, rooted in a company culture of respect and care. And this IT, we believe in continuous learning and upskilling in a world that is constantly changing, where technology is an accelerator and an enabler for a better tomorrow. Across this workforce, we have almost every skill you could imagine in IT. From core functional knowledge, to supporting our cloud infrastructure at scale, to our collaboration tools and platforms like the Microsoft technologies, through to people who understand digital commerce in depth and with great capability, to data scientists and data engineers, and of course, to the people who help protect us in Nestle, our cybersecurity specialists. Hi, my name is Julio Costa and I am from Ecuador. So my story with Nestle began eight years ago when I was working for three years in the factory as a supply chain trainee. Then I got my MBA and after that I got rehired to Nestle working in the IT department for supply chain. Now I'm working in the master data team in business analytics. What I love the most about working in Nestle IT is the great offices, the multicultural environment that anytime that you feel tired you can get a break and take free coffee that we have the flexibility to work from home if we need it, and that we enjoy the benefits and packages of working for Nestle. Check out the career site and join us. Nestle's mission is to unlock the power of food and enhance the quality of life for everyone. I'm very proud of the fact that Nestle IT plays a key role in that. Supporting our countries, supporting our functions, and supporting our workforce in that journey. As we come to the end of this session, I want to say thanks for tuning in and listening to us. 
I hope you learned a bit more about Nestle and IT in Nestle. If you got excited about the possibility of working here, I encourage you to go onto nestle.com and look at the global opportunities that are available. If you do do that, I wish you luck, and I hope to see you in the future. For now, goodbye. So, hopefully everybody can hear me, and here we are back live, and this time with Chris Wright live. Hello, Chris. Good afternoon, or good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you all are. Yeah. So Chris, uh, following the video message, is there anything that you want to add? And just to say to everyone, we see a lot of questions coming in. Please keep them coming and we'll attack them in just a second. Yeah, not, not much to add, Vic. I think uh, you know, the, the team there, Yelena, Vic, Reno said quite a lot, but what I would say is that's just a small subsection of, of IT at Nestle. Uh, we're located as a company in, in over hundred countries around the world. We've got multiple regional above market hubs. Uh, we're involved in every area of IT from what you saw there in areas like analytics and digital, but also through to what we do in manufacturing, in HR, in finance, um, and indeed in our core infrastructure and cloud environment. So it's a very, uh, a very broad area supporting every aspect of the company. Um, lots of opportunities there uh, for, for many, many different interests. Uh, so that's really just a small subsection of it. Maybe we'll cover a, a bit more uh, as we go through some of the, the q and A. I I think so, yes. So one question that came a few times is, can I work in Nestle IT if I don't have a tech degree? Well, well Vic, my, my answer to that would be, um, I hope so, because I don't have a tech degree. Uh, I actually studied uh, physics at university. I did a master's in uh, the advanced physics of electronic materials. Don't study that, by the way. It's not very exciting. Um, and uh, I was actually doing that with a company called GC in a semiconductor fab before I joined Nestle. Um, I nearly didn't join Nestle because they also made me uh, made me an offer. I did because I wanted to be in IT. Um, I, uh, much though I enjoyed studying physics, it wasn't what I wanted to do. And I felt that IT one day uh, would become a function that helped integrate the company and, and would be involved in every single aspect of the company. And that's what fascinated me. And that's why I, I joined. Um, you, you see, I'm a little bit grey, a little bit older than I was uh, was then, but but I think that's proven to be true. We support now every aspect of the the company. We help integrate the information flows across the company, and we have the opportunity to be engaged at everything from our factory floor uh, through to HR to finance, and indeed the way we relate to our consumers and our digital presence. So uh, so no, you don't need a tech degree. Uh, you do need an ability to learn. Uh, you do need to be strongly motivated and excited by by what we do, but uh, a tech degree is not not a prerequisite. In fact, I would say that the diversity of background is tremendously important. Um, uh, many forms of diversity are important, but but you know within that diversity of background is also key in diversity of education, experience, and thinking styles. Yeah, thank you. So, for those who are starting their career in technology, what advice would you give them today? Yeah, I, I think, first of all, um, to, to, to be prepared to learn. Um, what you know today might not be the relevant skills in five years or 10 years' time. And actually, the most important skill I think any of us can, can have is an ability to learn, uh, to connect the dots, and keep reapplying as well our historical knowledge. Some of the things I know from years ago are no longer technically relevant, but the philosophy behind them, the thinking behind them, the architectural concepts behind them are still very relevant. So I think it's, it's really my first advice would be take the opportunity to learn, uh, try and get diverse experiences, learn about different areas, don't not just just one, um, because the more you can broaden your knowledge, the more you can understand who we're trying to support. So understanding our customers, uh, the people in our business, those things are key. So, so really, for me, the, the key thing is to really hone your ability to learn, uh, be, be super interested in that, be curious about it. Um, and then be very, very pragmatic in how to deliver against that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm following on my phone here. I'm having a little bit of an issue with the, 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 the feed of the questions. So how can I switch? That must be an IT I issue, Vic. We'll, uh, we'll call it is an IT issue. One. It's terrible. So I, I could can... blame the end user on that one. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so how can I switch to IT from a marketing background 
what first step should I take? But first of all, I would say good decision. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, joke your part. We have people who've moved in both directions, actually. We've had people who've moved from IT into to, to some marketing, areas, particularly around sort of analytics and data related stuff. But, but also in, particularly in uh, Vikrant's area and Renault's area, we've got people who had historical backgrounds more in marketing or indeed in, in marketing agencies and so on. Um, so often there's a, there's a key link because the, 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 the real thing about being good at IT is understanding IT, but also understanding what you're trying to achieve with IT. And very often having that business knowledge, that business experience, if you're also technically motivated and technically able to, to, to learn, can be a great asset in an IT environment as well. Uh, so we certainly have people from those sort of backgrounds. Um, what's important, again, is that ability to learn and the ability to, to transfer the skills. But the knowledge can be tremendously uh, beneficial also in an IT world. Thank you. Looking a little bit at the technologies themselves, are you planning in Nestle to use new technologies like Metaverse or Web3? Yeah, I mean, look, I think uh, for Web3, first of all, I'd say Web3 is going to happen. You know, and it's not about whether Nestle chooses or chooses not to uh, to, to leverage Web3. Web3 is happening, will happen, and Nestle is absolutely going to be, be a part of that journey. It's the way we need to evolve in the same way that a few years ago we needed to evolve to, to leverage social media as that began to emerge. Web3 is going to be tremendously important, um, especially with all the, the privacy aspects and different approaches there. So very important. I think also, you know, new technologies, things like metaverse as an example there's a lot of hype about metaverse uh, there's a lot of people trying to promote metaverse for, for everything but there are areas where we already see practical use cases today we're already using aspects of virtual reality to train our factory workers in some of our factories and that's expanding rapidly um, we're already beginning to look at digital twins in our, our factories and environments and we're heavily using augmented reality to support uh, engineers and factory workers remotely fixing technical issues. So, yeah, all of these new technologies are important. What is important in Nestle, though, is to figure out what's the use case that brings value to the business. It's not doing the technology for its sake. It's more the bridge between what's the technology capable of doing, what's the use case, or how can we bring value through it, and then let's apply that. And very often it's about using the simplest tool available, for the, uh, for the job and bringing that to bear. But yeah, we keep a close eye on the technology landscape. We spend a lot of our time looking, evolving our current landscape, but also looking at what's coming that we need to invest in for our technical foundations of the future. And we also spend time trying to be practical about which use cases are really gonna matter and what's just hype that will die away in the coming years. Sometimes we get that right, sometimes we get that wrong, but it's important we, uh, we make the choices. Thank you. What advice would you give to somebody who is a self-taught person, like a self-taught UX, UI designer? Being a self-starter, does Nestle employ such individuals or is a degree a must? Yeah, so, so it's a good, good question. And certainly it's true, the majority of our uh, recruits do have degrees by background, but it isn't a must. It's not an exclusive statement. We're also looking for experience, practical experience, and very important, as we talked about earlier, that ability to, to learn um, and, and to evolve. So, so no, it's not an absolute must. It's not a rule. Uh, it does happen that the majority of our people uh, in IT have, have degrees, but, uh, but certainly please uh, don't let that put you off applying. There's a very, very broad IT organization, a lot of opportunities to learn with us as well. So what knowledge and what fields are, let's say, future safe? And what would you recommend people in the tech field to equip themselves with? Yeah, so I think, I think first of all, uh, you know, future safe is a very broad term. Um, if you look back to when I joined, uh, joined Nestle, we were having a debate about the time about whether to allow employees access to the internet. Uh, it was that long, that long ago. Um, what's future safe? I, don't, I can't predict the future in 10 years or 20 years. What I do know is that future is gonna be very, very different to today. And we're gonna be part of the people who create that future and, and help move Nestle along in that, that future. Um, what I would say is that what we see today is there's a few skills that are in very high demand um, and that are, are likely to remain in, in high demand in some areas like things like analytics, and you had Vic on, on, Vic went on, uh, on earlier, um, things like security, 
uh, things like how we're growing in, in digital commerce and these type of areas, as well as our cloud in, uh, infrastructures and our, our evolution of our technology strategies. Um, there's a huge demand in those areas, as well as others at the moment. Nevertheless, core skills like architecture remain critical. Core skills and things like SAP are and will remain critical. So I think that there's many areas, but really being future safe isn't about choosing, I would say, any one area. It goes back to what I talked about earlier and having the ability to learn and create diversity in your knowledge so that you're adaptable to those new technologies that they come along, learn about those new technologies, and then whatever they are, um, you'll be part of that journey in the future. So for me, being future fit is less about which technology to choose, although there are some more important than others you know, today or growing faster than others today. It's more important about making ourselves fit for the future by making ourselves adaptable, uh, curious, learning, and always looking to uh, to evolve to something new and something different. Yeah, thank you indeed. So Vikrant Barn in the video, he touched upon the different kinds of skills that you need in data and analytics, but there was a question about it. What are the kinds of skills? So could you deep dive a little bit in that area, Chris? Yeah, and uh, I, I used to run uh, the analytics group. It was one of my, my previous roles. So it's uh, something I've, I've a passion for, and I'm uh, having done physics and maths in my background it's sort of my my passion area um i i think what used to be that our our skills uh you know 15 years ago in analytics was largely about building the technologies um it was building the the solutions uh the information flows to support it and that type of solution building is still important um but but then what began to evolve was that our thinking around data architecture became more and more important so data architecture is key uh, over the last few years, the ability to do data engineering, absolutely critical and in a more fluid and flexible way on more modern cloud platforms. And most of our analytics landscape now is, is really on uh, a lot of very open source cloud platforms. And then the thing we've added probably in the last four or five years is also skills around data science, uh, which have become as machine learning has matured, have become increasingly important and are very important to creating scale for Nestle across our, our markets. And last but not least, and it's probably the one that we recognized right towards the end is you can do the, the create the, the solutions and the technologies, you can create the, the data architecture, you can do the data engineering and you can do the data science. None of that is any good if you can't then help people make decisions on it and provide the insights off the top of all that analysis. So increasingly, we've also started making sure we recruit people with insights analysis uh, capabilities in certain areas. And this is one reason why Vikram's team has people who were previously in agencies, for example, because it brings that, that business knowledge in. So to make analytics work, you need all of those. Any one of them is missing, not just the tools technology, any one of them is missing, and analytics doesn't work. So, uh, so it's, it's quite a broad, uh, a broad set. And probably the hardest thing within all of that is getting the overall information architecture right in a company like Nestle. We're in 186 countries, 50 markets, uh, five zones, more than, more than 10 categories. Um, getting our information architecture right, that we can create scale on topics like sustainability, on topics like financial reporting, on topics like how do we do commercial analysis. This is really tough in a company as big and diverse as Nestle. And that data architecture piece is uh, an area we put a lot of time into now. It's not an easy one to solve. Um, when you do solve it and create scale from it, it's one of the, the, the best things because it's, it's a really tough challenge. Um, and it's fantastic to see when we do it well and we do it simply, and we can really have an impact when, uh, when we, we do something at scale across many, many countries. Thank you. Yes, indeed, it's all about bringing, let's say, outcome for, for the company, for the planet, for people, et cetera. So I'm wondering how does IT enable supply chain chain planning at Nestle to be more effective and efficient. And there are many, let's say, aspects of that uh, efficiency and effectiveness. Can you talk yeah. about that? It's, and, and supply chain planning is a very broad, broad topic. So we, we have what we call uh, demand planning, which is what is the demand coming from our customers? And can we predict that in order that we, we make sure supply chain and ultimately manufacturing and procurement understand what's being delivered? We have supply network planning, which is linking from that demand plan to, okay, what are the ingredients we need, the manufacturer we need to, to deliver the demand from our customers. 
Um, and, and then also we have more detailed planning around things like transportation routes. Um, so, so Nestle is involved in all of these levels, right? Historically, we used SAP a lot for our demand planning. We're currently deploying something called OMP as a pilot. And over the next few years, we'll deploy that across the, uh, the, the world. Right now, we're focused in America and Thailand. Um, we have uh, supply network planning largely with, uh, with SAP, which is more the link to, through to, to procurement and so on. Um, we have detailed production planning in the factories. Um, and introduced in the last few years, we've put a much, much stronger focus on transportation planning and transportation route management. As you can imagine, we have a huge number uh, of trucks, of ships, of things moving around uh, countries and around the world and optimizing that um, and optimizing that to, to make sure the trucks are as full as possible, as efficient as possible, that the minimum carbon footprint, the routes chosen are the best ones, that we deliver on time to our customers is a huge challenge. And we created something called the Transportation Control Tower over the last few years that's now very broadly deployed in Nestle and bring a lot of value to that space. So supply chain planning is a very broad, broad topic. Uh, we could go even broader still, but um, IT is involved in all of those. And again, what's key is that we have an ability to pilot in two, three, four countries or markets, but then scale that globally. And that's exactly what we do in these spaces. Thank you. There's a question on which locations are hiring these days. And I think it's a nice opportunity also to maybe shed a little bit more light on how the team is set up, Chris. Yeah, so, so we have really, uh, what we think of as two layers of our, our global IT team. We have what exists at the, what we call the above country, above market level, um, where we have a number of hubs around the world. So we have uh, here in Switzerland, a relatively uh, a small group linked with the, the center. We have major hubs in, uh, in Barcelona and Milan um, that drive a lot of our product development and, uh, and our design of the, the future. Um, we have also, we've established last few years, both Mexico and more recently Bangalore. Uh, these give us geographic coverage um, and also uh, time zone coverage. So, so they're important ones. And then in North America, we have St. Louis where we, sort, we support a lot of North America from. And um, we also have places like Sydney, uh, Frankfurt and others, so quite a few few hubs. Um, in particular, uh, the, the biggest recruitment of those right now is probably predominantly in uh, Mexico, Barcelona, Milan, Bangalore, um, and to, to some degree, uh, uh, some, some areas of North America as well, but, but I would say more Mexico, Barcelona, Milan, Bangalore. But you'll see recruitment in all of those places I, I mentioned. Um, and then we have another part of our organization that we link to that's in each and every market. And a market for us is either a country or a group of, of countries. Um, and there is our local IT organization, and that's roughly 50% of our total IT organization. And I won't try and even list all the locations there because every major country you can think of in the world, um, from China to uh, the Central West African region to um, uh, Eastern Europe and, and Poland to uh, Brazil to Argentina to to Canada, uh, we have, are in all of those those locations. If you want to understand more about who exactly is recruiting, uh, please do visit the Nestle.com site. You'll see the careers section there where we post all of our our roles globally. Um, so I won't try and list every uh, every last location, Vic. I think there's too many, um, but uh, and and. Also, there's a tremendous opportunity for people uh, to develop their career as well by moving around. Um, I originally started in the UK, not in Switzerland. Um, if you look at my team today, uh, my direct reports, not just our broader team, um, I've got people who are based in uh, St. Louis, in North America, in Mexico, in Frankfurt, in Barcelona, in Milan, now in Bangalore, in Sydney, uh, in Switzerland. Uh, and that's just my my direct team. You know, it makes it hard to have physical team meetings, by the way. But um, it, it's a di diverse group, and uh, and a lot of opportunity around the world in different different places, different locations. Thank you. In terms of learning and development, uh, there's a part that falls under your domain, and a part that belongs, let's say, to Nestle. Can you talk a little bit about learning and development in Nestle IT? Yes, yeah, so, so there's two aspects, I'd say, of, of learning development. There's our learning and development and the skills that we're trying to encourage. And that goes from technical skills to architectural skills to also people skills, communication skills, leadership behaviors. Um, 
So there's a lot we we drive there. And and that can also be about ways of working, things like product management, DevOps, business relationship management, and how to do those well, because we need to create well, both good technical skills, well, but also well-rounded individuals who can communicate well and engage well with the, the, the business. So we build up uh, a lot of capabilities from an IT point of view. But then beyond that, IT also has a role to play in learning and development in the company. And here we work very closely with our human resources function uh, to look at how do we provide the tools, the learning platforms that help also Nestle to learn. Uh, we obviously don't provide the content for that, but we are providing the platforms uh, that allow people to engage, that uh, that help certify people, help check how people are progressing, um, and also that we can monitor and manage that across a workforce of 280,000 people. So it's a big, big workforce. I say covering everything from uh, our, our key workers in the factories to people in head offices to people who are out on the road most of the time. Thank you. Diversity and inclusion is very strong in Nestle. How can you encourage more women in technology, especially in Nestle IT? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic question, Vic. And uh, I was actually at a conference recently on, on this topic. And what I found disappointing, and it wasn't disappointing about Nestle, by the way, was that in Switzerland today versus in the 1990s, there are less women uh, graduating in STEM subjects, so science, technology, maths, et cetera, than there were in the 1990s. And that was really disappointing, uh, something we're not doing right in society. Um, but, but we are strongly focused on trying to get the right balance. And where we've created new centers, like in Barcelona, our balance is actually very close to 50-50. To um, that's been very deliberate. And by the way, we don't just focus there on diversity, male, female diversity, we also focus um, on cultural diversity. So we have a very broad range of nationalities there. Um, background diversity, so it's not just people who know CPG or certain technologies, it's people from many different backgrounds. Um, and uh, um, behavior type, personality type diversity as well. So, so we, we're very much trying to, to target that we create, create diverse organizations. And that's because we believe Diversity is important to performance. Uh, it's a, it's a, we fundamentally believe that, so we, so we need to act on it. Um, our current ratio uh, across IT as a whole um, is just over 30%. Um, it's exactly the same ratio, by the way, as you go up to senior levels in IT. So that's also uh, just over 30%, which is not where we want it to be. Uh, it is better than, than industry average, um, and we're working hard to, to further improve it. As I say, Yes, gender diversity is one aspect, but uh, also broader forms of diversity as well. Thank you. Does Nestle IT hire remote workers? So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question. And predominantly, we do, to give you an idea in, in Nestle, we do about 30% of our work with internals and about 70% with our partners, people like Microsoft, people like uh, IBM or Accenture or others. Um, so generally, where we're employing Nestle people, and this is not 100% true, is because we want them to collaborate together, not just in their team, but cross teams and also connect closely with our business. So the majority of our Nestle IT staff are linked to a location, albeit the vast majority of those locations are hybrid work environments. They're not uh, permanent in, in the office. It's a, it's a mix. Uh, for us, that uh, ability to collaborate is very, very important. Uh, Obviously, the, the amount of physical time in the office versus elsewhere has changed hugely from four or five years ago uh, and, and was only accelerated by, by COVID. But for us, that, that collaboration with the broader groups is also important. So we try to link people to our hubs and have them spend some time in our hubs, uh, albeit, albeit hybrid. Um, where it's pure remote, we might do that more on a contracting basis, but, but you know, or with through our partners. Um, but it's also harder for us to manage uh, careers, development of people and their broader connection with the company if it's 100% remote all of the time. Indeed. So, Chris, what has been your career highlight in Nestle? Gosh, uh, I've been, to give you an idea, I've been 27 years with, uh, with Nestle. Uh, in fact, 27 years in, uh, in 10 days' time. So I joined on 2nd of October 1995. Uh, what's my career highlight with, with Nestle? Um, you know, I think, I think it's probably the, uh, 
the, the point where um, we were going through a huge transformation uh, uh, four years ago, we started with a lot of organizational change, and uh, as well, we were beginning to set up things like Mexico, Bangalore, other other places. Um, probably, uh, my my highlight is when you start seeing that because it was it was challenging to do. It was creating a lot of a lot of change in in Nestle. The highlight was when you start seeing teams and people deliver stuff faster, better, more consistently, and having a bigger impact on on Nestle, and that being recognised by many of the business leaders in Nestle as well. Um, so the highlight for me is when uh, is the quiet satisfaction of when you see our teams, our people having an impact beyond even maybe what we thought was possible um, and helping to evolve, not just IT in Nestle, but helping to evolve Nestle as a, as a group. Um, and I would say in that sense that times are only getting more exciting. Uh, the importance of IT to the business is growing because IT is becoming more and more embedded in everywhere and everything we do. So actually that, I, I'm, I hope that my career highlights are still to come. <laughs> Good. So as you were saying, IT is super important in all organizations and really the starting point of digitalization. So how do you ensure that collaboration across the functions, uh, uh, the, the collaboration with IT across all the different functions? Yeah, it's, it's fundamentally important because IT doesn't operate in a silo. You know, we, we have a role to help integrate the information flows across the company. And to start with, we have to make sure we're engaging with every one of our functions from HR to manufacturing, to supply chain, to finance, to marketing and sales, um, and each of our zones and our markets. So, so we play a key integration role there. So our structure, we're structured really two ways. We're structured by people who focus towards our regions and businesses and by people, our product streams, that focus towards our different functions. And we try and embed ourselves very tightly together. Uh, you'll have seen some of the other presentations from the, the last days, if you've watched any of them, um, where you'll see things that IT is supporting appearing in their presentation. And we work very much hand in hand with the functions. They provide the strategic direction of what's important to say marketing or to sales or to manufacturing. And we're the delivery body behind that that helps bring that to life, bring that to scale. And, and we succeed by partnering together. Uh, it's not IT versus business, it's really business and, and IT. And I, I shouldn't say business, we're part of the business. Function and IT and zones together. And, uh, and also we're a function that, as I say, connects the information flows across the differing functions as well. So, uh, so it's very much hand in hand. In hand. Um, I think I saw a question earlier, uh, there was uh, Neil uh, Aurora's presentation, you know, what's our relationship to them? Well, our team are working with the, that e-commerce team every single day. Um, and, and by the way, that's one of the great things about Nestle because it's not IT in isolation. We're better and stronger and more effective and have more fun when we connect ourselves with the functions and work closely together. Absolutely. So actually, so IT often has the stereotype of individuals who work on computers and systems. So with what you were just saying, do you think this stereotype is evolving? I, I, I think it, it, it is evolving. And, and by the way, I, I still like some time working on my system in isolation in quiet time. Uh, I, get, I get less of it than maybe I did when I first joined Nestle. Uh, but, but, you know, as an IT person, you often people that enjoy problem solving, enjoy uh, technical challenges, problems. Uh, I, I still love a good crisis when something goes wrong and we have to figure out how to fix it. Uh, I, I don't like it too much, but I, I enjoy aspects of it. So, um, so I, I think that role is, is, is changing. Um, I think though what's important is we still need to be able to do both. We have to be able to get into the intricacies of architecture and data architecture and how environments sit together. Some of the pure coding and so on can be simpler than maybe it was 20 years ago with we get more and more tools around it, but actually architecture, the speed at which things move, uh, how you drive it, that's if anything, becoming a more challenging uh, problem as IT becomes more and more connected, more and more embedded. But I think that also means that IT people nowadays need to be able to communicate with people in the business more effectively than maybe we did when I joined, when, when you could be sat behind a PC for longer. So we need both. Uh, we need people who are, love technology, love those complex problems, but are also able to articulate and communicate that with our business and also within the, uh, the IT environment. Thank you. 
I want to say thank you for all the very kind comments that are coming through the chat as well. People thanking for a great presentation, Chris. Uh, there's a question on what you think is next in terms of tech careers. So, so I, I think, uh, you know, I, I, the, the, the next thing I think is that we've got to elevate IT. And, and this is true of Nestle. I think it's true of, by the way, I, I say this for IT people everywhere. It's not just for Nestle. Um, we have to learn more and more about the, the business because increasingly the tech world is moving so fast that we need to help guide and advise. The business is still the one who are the experts in their function, in their domains, but we need to be better partners to them. And, uh, and that goes to our ability, not just to understand the technology, but to invest in understanding their worlds as well and helping them evolve their worlds um, in the same way that they'll help challenge us, the, the functions help challenge us and evolve what IT does. So I think that the big thing is for IT to get more and more connected to how we drive business value not just how we create efficiency in the company, but how we drive business value. And that goes back to that partnership. It takes two in a box. It takes the function and IT working, uh, working together. Um, and I think if IT does that well, IT can move beyond being just a technology or platform or solution provider, but also becomes almost a custodian of information architecture in and across companies. And if we can do that well and bring insight and value from, from the information architecture and the data, then we've we can really really make a difference and and i say that generally for the industry rather than just for uh, for nestle Thank by the you. way i do also believe that because of nestle's scale and our level of standardization the back that we can probably do that better than anybody so join us before the others <laughs> yeah so i think we've got the right question then for that what is your advice to a fresh it graduate who wants to start their career with nestle I say, first of all, uh, go to nestle.com and, and apply. Uh, it's always, always step one, do the basics, do the basics, right? Um, I, I, I think also, you know, in, in applying, come in with a clear view of, of learning um, because you'll bring all your experience and your knowledge, but the best value you can get for yourself as well is to then learn about everything you don't already know. And you'll probably know a lot about the technology. Mm -hmm. Take the chance to learn a lot about the company too. It's a great company. And the more you understand the company, uh, the more you can understand how IT brings value to the company. And I, I would say it took me a while to realize that. Um, after 27 years, I, I think I got it. And I, I regard my key skill now as being, how do I architect the link between the business functions and our businesses and IT? Um, and, and that's where I can bring a, a lot of value. So understanding both those worlds and learning, uh, really being curious and just learning, learning, learning. Um, uh, a, learning can be fun. B, it pays off uh, every time um, and it keeps the world interesting. You know, you get new problems, new challenges that way. And the world in 10 years is not going to be the one we know today. So more than anything, our ability to learn, evolve, remain curious and keep changing um, is, is critical. And I'm trying to keep changing uh, every day, even if I'm uh, getting a bit, uh, a bit older. <laughs> uh, don't we all? So uh, we've got three minutes until wrap up, and I think it may be time for you to give us some, some final words. And maybe a question is, what is the kind of difference that you want to make through IT in the next years? Yeah, well, I think we touched a, a little bit on this. Um, I, I, first of all, is I, I'd I really want IT, and, and again, this is beyond Nestle, I think IT has a bigger role to play than just as a technology provider. We are holding together the information architecture of many companies. We're the only ones who see all of that. And I, and I think that's where in IT generally we need to, to up our game and, and understand not just individual solutions, but how they all piece together to support the various business needs. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that, if, if, as I say, if we, if we do that well, that will make a huge, huge difference. Um, and that challenge is on us in IT and Nestle. It's on our partners and our vendors, including some of the software partners, to, to get better at, at what we do. Um, and, and I think the other part then is to really, really focus on challenging ourselves, not just on providing technology, but ensuring that we're bringing business value through that technology. Is it really driving sales growth? Is it really driving better engagement with our customers, with our consumers? Are we giving those consumers or our end users in our factories a better experience? Is it allowing them to work better? Is it creating greater efficiency in our supply chain? 
is it helping, and this is a key, key topic for us, is it helping Nestle achieve our sustainability goals and commitments? Um, we've got big commitments on packaging, on carbon, and on other areas. And one of the key aspects is the information architecture and data to A, understand where we're at, B, understand where we need to get to, and see how do we uh, how do we do it. So I, I, I think that for me is, uh, is that we get really good at understanding what's the goal as a business we're trying to achieve, rather than the goal being deploying IT. Uh, obviously, to achieve that goal, you need the IT, but I want us to focus on the outcomes. And if we can get really good at that, and really good at communicating that with the business, then I think we have a much bigger impact to the benefit of Nestle. Um, and, and in areas like sustainability, that impact goes beyond Nestle, that impact goes, goes to, to society and, uh, and broader. And, and that's one of the things that motivates me is being able to support having an impact on both. None of it, by the way, will be achieved by IT in isolation. It's really by IT enabling those, those things, those, those capabilities. Uh, and that's what uh, gets me up in the mornings. <laughs> that's that's great. Thank you so much, Chris, for a very insightful session. And thank you, everyone, for your questions that made this session possible. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. And please check out nestle.com for career opportunities. Before you tune out, I want to also flag for the next session with Christian von Alten, Marcus Mieche, and Laura Vacotto as they talk about how Nestle, Microsoft and SAP work together on one of the largest enterprise cloud migrations. You don't wanna miss this one and you can actually click on a link in a chat to jump directly to the next session or go back to the Nest level main page to join. Uh, so with that, I think it's time for us to say thank you and have a lovely rest of the day or evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.